When building a fairly complex application, it's always a good idea to plan your code really well. Part of this process is to lay a solid foundation that you can build on. And that's exactly what we will be doing next. In this lesson, we will create the base controllers that form, well, well, that form the basis of our application, really. We know that we'll need to run some code for every page in this application. So, for instance, for every admin page, we need to check if a user is logged in. Now, we could put that code into every controller. For instance, we could have an admin folder to store our admin controllers. And then, for instance, we could do a dashboard file here. And we could create a controller there. And then in the constructor, we could load a model. And we could use that model to check if the user is logged in. Now, there's nothing really wrong with this, but we would have to repeat this code in every admin controller. But if we put that code in a base controller and we had this controller extend that base controller, then that code would automatically be run every time. And that would make your code much cleaner and much more easy to maintain. Okay, so how do we create these base controllers? Well, a base controller is really nothing more than a class that extends a default code igniter controller. And you create it like you would create any other class that extends a code igniter library. Now let's have a look how. Go into your application folder and dive into the core folder. There you create a new PHP file that you call my controller, like so. Now we store this in the core class because that's where the default code igniter controller also lives. Next thing we do is just create a class and we'll call it my underscore controller. Let's just get rid of this typo here and we'll have it extend the CI controller. Next, let's create a constructor like so because that's where we'll place our code that needs to be run on every page. And if we create a constructor here, we should make sure that we first call the parent constructor there as well. So the my controller class will have access to all the goodness of the CI controller class. Now extending the code igniter core with my underscore classes is a really powerful feature. There's a whole section about it in the code igniter user guide and I encourage you to read it. So now that we do have this class, let's add some features in there. Uh, we'll create a public variable called data and that'll be an empty array. And while we're at it, let's add some keys to that array. So we would have this data errors, which would be an empty array. And we could have this data site name, which would be all oh, the site name that we configured in our config file. Now, of course, we need to check and see if that works. Let's just open up the welcome controller and have it extend my controller instead of CI controller. Now, if all goes well, then we should be able to VAD dump this data here. Let's go over to the browser, reload the page, and sure enough, there it is. Now, it's one thing to have a my controller, but I think it would be a good idea to create both a front end and a back end controller. In the front end base controller, we could, for instance, fetch the menu that we need to display on every page. And in the admin controller, we could do a login check. So let's close all these files and go into the libraries folder. And that's where we create a front end controller, which will be called front end underscore controller dot PHP and an admin controller, which we'll call admin underscore controller dot PHP. Now in the front end controller, let's create a class called front end controller, and it will extend not the CI controller, but it will extend my controller. And let's just copy the constructor from the my controller class, like so, paste it in here and take this out and clean it up. So now we have a front end controller that extends my controller and its constructor will call the constructor of the parent. Select and copy that and just paste it into the admin controller and make sure we name this class admin controller. Now let's see what happens if we have the welcome controller extend the front end controller instead of my controller. Let's go back to the browser and check, reload the page here, and that doesn't seem to be working. And that's because the front end controller cannot be found by code igniter. We need to add an autoloader for that. So let's do that. This is a bit hacky, but I'll just place it inside of my config file. 
Here I'll create a function called underscore underscore auto load and that will take the class name as a parameter. Now we only need to run this auto loader if the class name does not start with CI underscore. So we'll just add a conditional for that. Let's store the place to look for that class inside of a variable called file. We'll start with the application path, followed by libraries, followed by the class name, followed by .php. And if that file exists, and if it is a valid file, then we'll include it. Let's just get rid of the typos there. And that should work. So to recap, we've created an autoloader that takes a class name. If the class name does not start with CI underscore, then it will try and look it up. And if it exists, it will include it. Let's go back to the browser and see if it's fixed this hideous warning. And sure enough, it seems to be working. Let's just do one more final check. The welcome controller extends the front end controller. So if we place code here, then it should be run. Let's check to see if it does. Refresh the page. And sure enough, it says welcome from front end controller. So now we have three base controllers. There's a my controller that's run throughout the entire application, no matter where you are. Then there's a front end controller that we'll use to extend all the front end pages from. And there's an admin controller that we'll use to extend all the admin pages from. That's it for base controller. Next is setting up the database. And we'll be doing that in the next video.